Hello, everybody. Welcome back to uh, All of Us Studios. We got Pierce back in the house tonight. Pierce, how you doing? Good, man. Awesome. Ready for some gamers mindset training. Exactly. Training ground, training ground. So we are going through, if you guys have been paying attention to our last two podcasts, uh, we've been talking a lot about how to rank up if you're a new player, if you're a player that's been stuck in an ELO for a while. How are you going to actually focus on yourself and your skills and your responsibilities and what you can do to actually rank up your game and make it more fun for yourself and more fun for the other people around you? Um, because the more you know, the more that you're going to be better at shot calling, the more that you're clicking heads, the more that you're able to kind of control the game and focus down fire on people that are the biggest threats out there. And uh, and it just becomes... Uh, you, you want know, to be better team players. Fun, right? yeah. yeah, better team players, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to show you guys a little example of how um, you can take, well, Pierce is a much better player than I am, and so he's going he's to kind of guide me through and take a gold-level player, which I am right now, just kind of back and forth depending on uh, depending on what role I'm playing. Support and tank, I'm pretty much like a high silver, and I'm solid gold in DPS. So we're going to... Yeah. We're going to hop in and do a few things here to uh, improve my game and uh, over this series that we're going to continue to sh continue to roll out for you guys. Hopefully we'll see uh, see me rank up utilizing these skills and utilizing these practice um, training grounds and stuff to then once we get into game, we stream Overwatch every Friday night. Um, so where should we start, Pierce? So uh, here at the bronze rank, we want to focus our gamers mindset on exploration, exploration of the game. And uh, so Pierce, what do you think um, exploration should mean to a new player picking up Overwatch for the first time? Yeah, the reason we felt that exploration was the most important mindset to have for a new player is the fact that you're diving into a new experience. And since Overwatch isn't a typical FPS, and there's a lot more strategy and layers and each character has different abilities. We feel like you should take this time to really explore everything that Overwatch has to offer. And this includes the heroes, the maps, the types of gameplay out there, and explore your skill sets within that uh, those map types. We're gonna start off here by doing what we believe is the best thing for a brand new player picking up Overwatch for the first time, and that is jumping into training ground. And why are we gonna do that, Pierce? Yeah, so, since we're focused on exploration, we want to explore the heroes, the maps, and the game types. And typically what I like to do first, and I think the first thing you should always do when you're exploring, is figure out what the heroes that look interesting you, to you and what you can do with those heroes. And so at the train ground, it's really nice because they break down, you have all the heroes here, and they're broken down by different classes. And so he, over here on the left, we have the tanks. Brian, you want to explain what tanks do? Yeah, so the tanks are kind of the uh, front line of defense for the team. They usually have a higher hit pool and usually have some type of protective ability, whether that be a shield or increased movement ability or the ability like uh, Roadhog can just self-heal himself. So they are just basically huge meat shields or have actual shields that can provide cover with the other team and just protect the rest of the team from the front line. Yeah, and tanks will be there to create space for the rest of the team. They're the they're the, the ones who charge forward and lead the charge as far as getting your team to move into a different position. Um, next, we have damage. Yeah, so damage characters. These are going to be characters with that have abilities to ship out a ton of, you guessed it, damage to the other team trying to create the eliminations and they're the ones that are also going to uh, often have uh, good movement abilities to take side flanks or to get behind the enemy lines um, and mess with their support which support is what pierce yeah and then lastly we have our support and support uh also known as healers because they have healing abilities and so these are the people that are they to see the game from the largest perspective typically? They're gonna be the ones trying to keep their tanks and their DPS alive, while at the same time using their utility to shut down the enemy team while they're trying to do things using uh, Sleep Dart or other cool utilities that you're going to learn as you explore these heroes. And so a cool thing about the, uh, the train ground is we can actually look at hero details for any of these heroes. So all you have to do is just select a hero and click on hero details. That's the triangle button. 
And this will break down the basics of what each of these skills do. And uh, that'll be jumping right into our control skill set. So real quick, we're going to just run through these and show you exactly what button does what and how you can utilize those in this game. So we go to the option menu and hit controls. Usually that's the default. It'll pop up right away. And we're just going to go through movement real quick. What we have here is toggle crouch. That's the circle button right now. What that means is instead of holding down crouch, you're just, when you push it, it automatically crouches you and you stay in crouch until you push circle again. So you can go ahead and practice that, crouch around a little bit after you've selected soldier and then uncrouch. The next one we're gonna go down to is jump, which is key to X right now. And essentially like any other FPS, you gotta have a jump function. So just jump around for a few minutes and get used to jumping and maybe alternate crouch and jump. Another thing to remember about crouching is that the enemies will not be able to hear you when you're in a crouched form. So you can use that to kind of sneak around the map um, because they won't hear your footsteps. Yes, it lowers your profile so you can crouch behind cover better and they can't hear you when you're moving. It does slow you down though, so a lot of people alternate movement with crouch and they try to mix it up in their kit. The next thing we're gonna look at is weapons and abilities. So in Overwatch, you have three abilities, one being your ultimate, which is something that you have to save up by charging, by, by doing damage, healing, and doing other things in the game, you're allowed to charge your third ability. And that usually has a big impact on the game where your first one and two abilities are on basic cooldowns that you use in the situation in the moment. So we have ability one, ability two, and ability three. Those are gonna be your R1, your R2, and your triangle functions. So right now I'm on soldier and my R1, my L1 is sprint. So soldier gets a toggleable sprint that he is allowed to do at any time during the game. And you can sprint around, practice jumping and sprinting with this function. Your R2 ability, for soldier specifically is this healing field. And what he, he does is he places this down and you notice that the cooldown in the bottom right corner is ticking away. So this is on cooldown for about 14 seconds until he gets it again. And that heals in an AOE radius around where he places the beacon. So he only gets to use that every 14 seconds. Yes, he that's what that a cooldown is. Seconds. Okay. And it's line of sight based. So something to keep in mind when you place this down, if you're on this side of the corner in the field, you actually don't get healed. So, cool little FYI. And for the third ability, what we're gonna do is show you our triangle button. Uh, Soldier specifically gets something called Tactical Visor, and this is essentially an aimbot uh, function. It lasts for about six seconds. It allows him to shoot at a faster increased rate, and you don't really have to aim that well for it to work. And that goes as follows. So anything in the circular field is going to get tracked. It also reloads your clip, and this allows you to shoot the characters down without really aiming at them. You just have to aim in their general direction. So every character in, in the game has an ultimate that has a specific ability that's on a charge based on your play. And if you look into the bottom center of your screen where the triangle and there's a little bar meter filling up, that is your ultimate bar. As I do damage, that bar fills up faster, or as I heal, that bar fills up faster also. And you healed a little bit right there. So as you can see, that bar is ticking up. The next thing we're gonna go over is our primary and secondary fire. So if we go down past movement to weapons and abilities, you go past the skills, we're gonna look at interact, primary fire, and secondary fire. So interact is typically used with Symmetra's um, teleporter or other skills specifically, and I wouldn't have to worry too much with interact right now, but that's your L3 button. Um, more where is L3 on the L3 controller? L3 is where you push down on your left thumbstick. Yep, so, so the joystick itself, press that down. That is what your L3 function is. R3 would be the... Uh, melee function. Exactly, and that is the right joystick. You can click that, and that's actually a button. Yep, that's how you beat some face physically. <laughs> Anyways, 
We're going to move on to primary and secondary fire. Primary fire is typically your right uh, R2 button. And this is going to allow you to just fire your uh, primary fire right here. In this case, it's an automatic rifle shot with soldier. And his secondary fire is a grenade that does is like a rocket that he fires and does uh, a small amount of AOE damage, but about 120 damage to the primary target if it's a direct hit. And you can see in that bottom right corner that when you use the rocket, the rocket is also on a cooldown. Yes. So you can't just consistently use that. You have to manage your cooldown abilities based on the timing uh, that each one is available. Yes, and it's a great ability for finishing off or starting a fight, especially for those squishy characters. Yeah, so a good, a good baseline use of a character is just being efficient and use, utilizing their abilities on cooldown um, to get great value. So the next one we're going to have to switch characters just to show what this ability does real quick. And so we're going to go to the train ground real quick to switch to something that has two weapons. Uh, we have Torb now right here, and the only reason I pulled him up is because we want to show that he has another weapon switch, and that is going to be the left but the right button on your D-pad. And Torb specifically has this cool hammer he can pull out, and you can switch back to your gun at any time. So not only does Torb have two different firings, but he has another weapon with a completely different skill set. In this case, it's his hammer, which he can use to repair his... Uh, turret if he needs to or it actually does about 35 melee damage or a little bit more than the typical melee damage and so you can actually kill characters with the hammer kind of cool that is cool and he's also my favorite character yes it happens to be Ryan's favorite he's character the so the last couple things you need to learn are reload uh, so that is the square button so obviously when you run out of ammo, your gun will automatically reload uh, if you let it. But a lot of times you're in a fight, you want to fire a couple shots off and then you're readjusting to a different position and you just push square and that reloads the button right there. And that's how you use reload. So once you've gone through the uh, basic button layout um, for, th for the character and you decide, okay, I want to I wanna choose this character uh, for my first match, before we get into the big grand game of Overwatch, we want to make you feel more comfortable with uh, an FPS, an FPS game type that's more familiar to you. So we're gonna go into uh, arcade and then move over to the free for all or deathmatch, which is much more uh, familiar to like a modern warfare or other types of games where you're not focused as much on how the team works together and focus on the other team or in this in this particular game you'll often move a payload or have to take control of a position in a map this is just about kills it's very straightforward and very simple and it's a good place for you to just practice um individual characters and focus on on the one on the character mechanics. all yourself right yes. Yeah, this is the great place to break down your mechanics and learn the hero without having to focus on what the enemy team's doing and what all the people are, like Brian was saying. You, this allows you to just focus on solely your ability with this hero and learn its kit. And so this is a great way, and it's kind of you're kind of being sent to the gauntlet because in this case, it is a 1v7 uh, in a lot of ways, but everyone else is playing against that same kind of metric. So you're going to be... A lot of people will be coming up behind you. You'll be playing against a lot of the same heroes. Typically, a lot of the DPS will be in there. Um, and there will be some tanks, too, like Sigma and Roadhog, who will be playing in the deathmatch quite often. And that's okay. This is just for you to focus on how you play. And it'll also give you a base level idea of what the matchups are going to look like when you get into Overwatch for the one you want. It's also a really good place to understand pressure in Overwatch. And um, pressure is one thing that can lead to uh, toxicity in this game because people don't practice having to deal with it and how having to work through it. So in deathmatch, this is a great place to feel the pressure of, okay, there's seven people out there and they could be coming from anywhere, but just take a breath. You know, there's, not, there's nothing here that's going to affect your rank in the game or anything. It's just a fun place for you to practice your mechanics. So 
And what you're going to do is you're going to go in there. You're just going to breathe. You're just going to relax. You're going to focus on your gameplay. Don't worry about winning the death match. Just focus on, okay, I'm moving smoothly. Okay, I know the buttons. This feels comfortable. Think about the buttons. Take your time here. And when you see somebody, you can try to shoot at them. But don't get don't get worked up that you need to win the death match. It, it's not going to give you anything um, dramatic in the game or outside the game. This is just a place for you to feel the pressure of a of a one on one often or a one on two type situation before you get yourself into a six v six situation in the main game, which is often too much pressure for a brand new player to feel. So just relax, take your time, take a deep breath, and enjoy your time here.